Hi guys and welcome to today's video. Today we're talking about the Birkenstocks Arizonas. I have received so many questions about these recently, mainly because I wear them quite a lot. I feel like they're quite a trendy shoe. So people wanna know, are they worth the money? Are they as comfy as people say they are? And should you invest? So today I'm going to mainly be talking about the Birkenstock Arizonas. A lot of these points will apply to the other Birkenstocks as well, because a lot of them are very similar. But the reason I love the Arizonas is because A, you slide your foot in, B, they support your foot really well, and C, aesthetically, I think they look good as well. So, but there are other ones that are nice. There's ones that are really similar to, to these, but they have a back to them. They're cute, but then you don't slip your foot in. A few of the other styles are also quite supportive like these, probably even more so if they have a back, but I am lazy, so I really like that you can slip your foot in with these, and I think they look cool. I have two pairs, a black pair and a khaki pair. They are both very worn. I was kind of like in two minds as to whether I should film this, should I buy a new pair to film this video? But we're just gonna keep it real. Like these are my Birkenstocks, they've definitely been worn. Cleaning these has been on my to-do list for about, oh, maybe about a month now. And I just haven't got around to it because who knows what the best way is. There's such conflicting opinions on that. But do bear in mind that mine are very worn. So if we have a quick look at Birkenstocks, they are made from like a, a rubber sole, I think it's rubber, I'm not even 100% sure, a cork footbed and then a leather strap with a, with a metal buckle. I will be washing my hands after this, don't worry. And they have a very like orthopedic design to them. I, they, I think they were initially made by like an orthopedic doctor. And actually I wear them quite a lot and sometimes I take them when I go for a podiatrist appointment and they always say to me that Birkenstocks are a great pick. And I think we we're very much in like an ugly shoe era anyway. Um, and yes, they are ugly. Yes, they're kind of like Jesus sandals, but that's kind of the, f the point. And I feel like you have to kind of embrace that. I think these are a great ugly shoe because at least they also offer great support. They have like a little bar along the front where your toes kind of grip onto and they have a lot of arch support. And really I think they're quite timeless though. I know that um, maybe like 10 years ago, they were very much seen as like a dad shoe. And don't get me wrong, I still feel like they are a little bit, but I feel like you see a lot of like cooler celebrities and just general people wearing them. The fact that they're made from three different kind of main parts, the leather, the sole and the base, means that they are quite easy to repair. But honestly, if I have a look at mine, especially my black ones, which I probably wear the most, and in particular my left foot, I think I'm much, much heavier on my left foot. With both my Birkenstocks, the left feet kind of needs to be replaced. In particular, at the heel, you can kind of see that it's kind of coming away a little bit, which is a bit annoying, but they are easy to repair. I haven't looked into it too much because honestly I don't want to get rid of, I don't want to have to stop wearing them for a couple of days. Um, but that is on my to-do list. I think I might look whilst I'm in Portugal because um, I know that the, the sole comes from, the cork sole comes from Portugal so I'm hoping that they can also do a good job with repairing the cork. Because as you can see mine's kind of peeling a little bit and I think it's quite important to not let that happen because it will, the longevity of the shoe. I've seen online that they're not the cheapest to repair though. I've seen some people say that they're, they're actually about as expensive to really repair. Obviously I feel like just adding a little bit of, adding a heel would be okay, but to replace the leather or the cork, in particular the cork, I think is almost as expensive as, as buying a whole new shoe. So I think that's something to bear in mind because they do last a while. A lot of people that say that they've had theirs for 10, 15 years, have replaced a large portion of them that they're almost not the same shoe that they bought in my opinion. But the main question that I get asked really is, are they comfortable? And honestly, for the first, I'm gonna say week, they are not. Even every year, like I bought my first pair back in 2019 and every summer I feel like my foot has to get used to it and it's not comfortable for a while. They don't really rub, they may be a little tiny bit at the top, but really the, my issue is that the your foot has to get used to that real arch support, but I think it's a, a good thing for your foot to have to get used to. So they are uncomfortable for about a week, not painfully uncomfortable, my feet don't bleed, it's just that they feel a bit sore. You can imagine what the sort of pain is like, it's not crazy, it's something that's very blunt, not huge, because that's just pushing into the sole of your feet, but obviously your whole weight's on that, but however long you're gonna walk, it's not as bad as being bruised, but there's definitely just a bit of soreness there. But after a week, I do find them very, very comfortable. I find that you can walk in them pretty far, I wouldn't go necessarily on a hike with them. If I'm going for a 20 minute, half an hour, even an hour walk, I know that I'll be absolutely fine, but they're not they're not a hiking shoe. That's not what I'm gonna reach for. If I know I'm going on an hour walk, I'm gonna reach for something that is more covered and has more support. But if I, ac 
accidentally ended up on an hour walk, I would be totally fine in my Birkenstocks. My issues with Birkenstocks, I have three. Let's start with one that I think is less serious, is Birkenstock tan lines. It does, it happens to me quite a lot. I wear my Birkenstocks a fair amount and I tan relatively easily. So if I'm not careful, I end up with a slight, it's only ever really slight tan line from Birkenstocks. And you know, they're, they're chunky straps. Not always the best look. The other two I feel like are really worth mentioning. The first one is I think they start to look quite messy. I need to kind of give these a little bit of a clean. I'm gonna polish the, the leather. The first summer they look beautiful. They look like somewhat polished, but they start to look quite sloppy quite quickly if you're not careful. And that's why I really feel like I need to maintain mine. But obviously that's something that all shoes get dirty and get a bit messy. All shoes need a bit of maintenance. I do find that the footbed can look a bit grubby and cleaning it isn't that easy. With these ones, I've actually washed them. I used some bicarbonate soda and a toothbrush and I scrubbed them. And I don't know if it really helped, to be honest. It was a few years back that I'd done that. I don't think you should wash, your, you should wet your Birkenstocks. And that is my biggest issue with Birkenstocks is I do find that they start to smell, not terribly, but they smell a little bit if you start to wet the sole. I like to garden. And so sometimes I do my watering in my Birkenstocks and I really regret ever having done that because I do find that they don't always smell the freshest because of that. It's not like bad, like they definitely don't smell now. Maybe if you like really stick your nose in there, they smell ever so slight, but really it's nothing like crazy, but equally like none of my shoes really smell. Um, so like having any sort of smell from my shoes is unusual. So that's just really something to bear in mind is that you do not want to get them wet. You don't want to wear them to the beach. You don't want to wear them on a walk that might have a waterfall at the end, or you don't want to go to the swimming pool and put these on. You don't want to water your garden in these just in case there's water in them. Obviously, it's not the end of the world. I really think it's important to try and keep these as dry as possible. Um, but they do do, I think they're called the, the Arizona Evas or EVAs. I'm not sure what they're called. Um, and they are waterproof, but I think, Unless you you know for a fact you're really gonna get them wet. These are just that little bit cooler in my opinion. I would be tempted by the Evas, I think, but if you have the money, I think it's worth splurging for these. I think the fact that it has a cork footbed and is really great. In terms of sizing, I have both of mine in a size seven. I would say I'm about six and a half um, in the UK size, so 39. Um, and I think, I, I think I'm a 39 and a half when I have them in a 41, a uh, uh, 40, sorry. I think, these are the regular ones and these are the narrow ones. I don't have a particularly wide foot. I don't think I have a particularly narrow foot either. But I think if you have like a very normal foot, you can go for either. But if you have a wide foot, I do think Birkenstocks are great. Michael has a wide foot, I would say, and they work really well for him. And I think it's very rare that shoes do work well for him. I really need to clean mine and I don't know how to go about that. I think I'm gonna sand them. If you are interested in how I'm gonna clean them, I will, I think I'm gonna update you on Instagram. So I'm gonna link my, Insta my Instagram down below. Um, I think maybe at some point this week I'm gonna try and sand them and see how that goes. I've heard that really works. And I'm gonna buy some like polish to do the leather. Here we go. This one, it, these aren't leather though, I don't think. I believe these are leather, but these aren't. Um, there isn't a huge price difference between the leather and the non-leather. I don't think there is a huge difference in the wear either. So these are vegan and these aren't. I don't really mind whether they're real leather or not. I was a bit worried that the the vegan leather wouldn't last as well, but I've kind of found them to be exactly the same. And I've had these ones for about two years now. So I feel like that's a good amount of time. In terms of like styling, I think styling them is really quite easy. I throw them on with everything. I wouldn't wear them with like tracksuits or like very, I wouldn't wear them to a wedding obviously, but I feel like almost anything I'd wear in summer, I could wear with Birkenstocks. I wear them with shorts, I wear them with dresses, because I feel like at the moment there's a real trend to wear like ugly shoes and pretty dresses, and I really like that. I'd wear them with, like, I'm wearing a cohort at the moment with the cohort that I'm wearing. I'd wear them with jeans and like a plain black t-shirt, and I feel like that looks really effortlessly cool. I really think they're versatile, and I think they are a real staple that you will have for a long time to come, which is why, in my opinion, yes, they are worth it. They are about 65-ish pounds, maybe slightly more, maybe slightly less. They used to be so much less. It is crazy how much the price of them has gone up, but I think they are worth it. I'm very tempted to get myself another pair of silver ones. In hindsight, I probably now wouldn't get these. I don't really get that much wear out of them. I would go for these black ones. These black ones, in my opinion, are great. If you like a black sandal, they are chef's kiss. If you don't love a black sandal, then I would go for the silver or the gold, whatever suits your skin tone and your wardrobe. I'm very tempted by the silver Arizonas. Oh yeah, I'm trying not to buy them, but 
who knows? I don't think I will, but very, very tempted. And I think it's kind of worth talking about other shoes that you might be considering that are similar to these. I have two other styles of shoes that are very similar, Tevers and Crocs. The two things about Tevers and Crocs are that they're very waterproof. So if you want something that's very waterproof, do not get these. If you are likely to get your shoes wet, avoid the Birkenstocks, go for Tevers, go for the Birkenstock Evers or EVAs, I don't know, or Crocs. I think these look way cooler than Crocs or Tevers in my opinion, and they're much more supportive than both, but I would go on a hike in Tevers because they have the back support, which I really, really like, and they're not leather. They just look like a little bit more sporty, but um, they don't have arch support like these do. And with the Crocs, I have a pair of Crocs that I garden with and I do like them. I will say that they are rubber, so I don't find them that comfortable. I don't think I could wear them like all day like I can my Birkenstocks. And I think that's all I have to say about my Birkenstocks. I'm trying to think if I've missed anything. Yeah, I love mine. I'm really tempted to get another pair. I really think they are worth the investment. It's really hard because some people say that Birkenstocks are super cheap. Um, other people say that they're really expensive, so it's really hard. I think they're a really good price point, to be honest. I can't see myself not wearing them anytime soon. I'm really hoping to get a good few more years out of mine. Let me know your thoughts on Birkenstocks. Have you got on with them? Um, how did you find the breaking in period? But thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you'd like to see next. In particular, what is it worth the hype video you'd like to see next? I'm thinking I might do a beauty one, but leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and I will see you all next Thursday. Bye.